Hey everyone, in this video, I will be showing you how to go about making one of these scrap yarn blankets with hexagons. It's a pretty simple little pattern that I have created to use up some scrap yarn. They come out pretty fun, pretty unique. It can be made in any size and it's just piece by piece. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, and so for the purpose of this tutorial, I wanted to kind of simplify things and I did each row in a different color. This is absolutely an easy way to go about do it if you're planning on keeping this style of um, pattern and whatnot, but I actually, I prefer to do it with the scrap like it was in the opening for this with the different color hexagons, but this can come out pretty cute too. So we will start with doing the hexagon shape. For this particular blanket, I have a medium weight yarn here. I use the H hook. You'll also need scissors and a yarn needle. And this will be um, later on in the video to show the edges if you choose to do it that way. So what we need to do is start with the circle on the inside. We do the magic circle or magic ring, or however they decide to um, call it. Let me remove my rings here. And we start with 12 double crochet. So you'll start with your slip knot, insert your hook, chain four, one, two, three, four. You're going to insert your hook back into that very first chain that you made. Bring up yarn and slip knot it through. And so that creates this ring. And this right here is where we are going to do our double crochet into. So you want to chain two on top. And we're going to do 12. So one, two, Now it's okay if you have the center pretty large. It actually helps as far as making sure we have room to do all of the stitches that we want to do. And then the beauty with the magic ring is that you can tighten it up once you're done. Notice I have the tail end going around the circle and that helps to pull it tight together. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Eleven and 12. And what you want to do is slip stitch. Now a lot of people like to slip stitch into the um, rising chain here. I'm not a fan of that for whatever reason. So I actually go into the first double crochet underneath both. Insert, pull yarn through. And again, and that is to hold that into the magic ring. Let's go ahead and remove The rest of that through and is now locked into place and you can pull the tail tight and see how it tightened up that circle a bit. So that's the very first row. Very simple 12 double crochet. Now if you do decide to use the same color for the entire hexagon then of course you don't need to worry about changing colors. You don't have to um, worry about so many weaving in the ends. However, um, if you go this route, then there is a little bit more weaving to do. So going into the second row, we have this bubble stitch. And what we do um, in working in the round, we have to kind of double. But because it's a bubble stitch and it adds that bit of texture, I have four double crochet going into each stitch around. And I will show you how I do that. So of course, we want to make sure we turn our work over. We're going to be working into the back of these loops. I always start in just a random spot whenever I'm working in the round because I don't like all of my tails being in the same spot. Um, it can kind of change the way that your piece evens out. So you take your new color, hook it and bring it through. You're going to do chain two. And again, we're putting four into this one spot here. 
So yarn over, go through two. Now to do the bubble stitch, yarn over, insert, bring up, two. Yarn over, insert, bring up, two. Over, insert, two. Now you will have five on your hook, and that's your four double crochet. Bring them all together, that makes one stitch here at the top. And what I like to do is do one more chain to lock it into place. And again, we're feeding this pink yarn around. So yarn over one, two, three, and four. Get five on your hook bring through all five. I tighten it down a little bit just because it helps to give the texture more and chain one. And again, we're going to do that all the way around. So give me just a moment. I'll be right back. Okay, and so here we are with our 12 all the way around. You will have the bump on the back side, which is the way we want it to be, and that's perfectly fine. And then we want to go ahead, and again, because we're working in the round, we want to go into this top portion of this bubble and slip stitch it together. Trim your yarn. Now at this point, if you're anything like me, you hate all these extra tails. These were, of course, weaved underneath, so I can easily just trim these off, get them out of my way. Make sure I pull this nice and tight. And go around a couple more here. Just feed it underneath, around in that circle. Just a couple stitches. It doesn't have to go too far, but it definitely completes the circle there. And take off that tail. Um, I like to work one color at a time when I do bigger projects like this. So I would do all the yellow circles, then all the pink, all the red, and so on and so forth. So if you need to take a break at any time, um, that's generally the way I like to work. It keeps me better organized. So moving on to the third row here, the red row, we have again, double crochet, and this is where we actually start to make our corners. Now working in a hexagon, cause it's a six sided shape. We are working in multiples of six. That's why we have the 12, the 12, and now we are making our corners in every other bubble. So we will be turning our work again and having the bubbles facing us. I take the space in between just because it's easier to work this way and I think it helps the design to lay out a little nicer. And again, you're going to add your yarn by chaining two. And I like to start with just three double crochet, standard double crochet. Two and three and in between our next two bubbles we're going to start and make a corner and this is where I like to do two double crochet I chain one because that chain is going to be your corner and then another two double crochet Now working the flat side, we want to do three double crochet. And now we have another corner. So two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet all going into those little spaces in between the bubbles. 
because the way it ends up laying, you can't really tell the difference. Um, instead of trying to fight and get them in top, I like to work around the edges there. So let me go ahead and finish going around and we will be right back. Okay, so here we are at the end of the red row. And again, we are going to go ahead and slip stitch to keep this round to the top of the red row there. And just locked in to keep things simple and clean. You can go ahead and tug on these loose red and pink a little bit here and get those done and out of the way so you have nice clean work. Um, now that we have the corners, the next two rows are very simple, just single crochet around. Um, now, what's going to be important is that in the first example, the yellow, pink, red, and green were all one color. The blue row would be one that is um, whatever you use to, to keep all of them together. Like, for example, the blue that's stitching it all together here um, would all be the same color. It's going to be the unifying color throughout the blanket. So... Again, this row is going to be a little different. They are single crochet, but I do go about them a little differently when it comes to the corners because it is such a tight stitch. Again, we are just continuing with medium weight yarn. Um, for projects like this, it's better to keep the same weight uh, for consistency. We're gonna bring our yarn in, chain one because this is single crochet. Go back in, retrieve, single crochet, and retrieve. Um, I always start on a flat side for this row. And then you will see here is our first corner. Now, if you're used to working corners or edges of blankets, this should be familiar to you. We're going to single crochet one. And to help to keep that corner I'm not just going to do one, I actually do two chains and then back into that same hole to make it a little more pronounced so when we do the blue row, it's easier to find that corner and get two stitches in there. Um, it helps to keep the hexagon shape. I tried to not do that and it made the work kind of fold in on itself. So we just carry on our merry way here, single crochet into each stitch and then doing a single crochet, two chains, one, two, and a single crochet into the corner. And I will complete this row and be back in just a moment. All right, and here we are at the end of the green row. We're going to slip into that first single crochet that we did and pull through. And again, I like to clean up as I go. I work row by row for however many pieces. Uh, these work out to be about probably close to five inches across so you can do the math to figure out how many you would need for a complete blanket of your chosen size and working with our final color here again we are going to do the same with a single crochet but in the corners of this row i only do a single crochet one chain and single crochet um i find just for the purpose of this one adding another row. Now, if I had another two or three rows, I probably would continue with the additional chains, but since this is going to be my last row for this piece, then I'm only going to do the one to help keep that hexagon shape. So now we have it facing us the right way. We got the bubbles towards us. I like to start again on the flat edge, hook in, pull up your chosen color, chain and start your single crochet. Um, it took me a couple times to create this pattern 
and to have these corners work out the way that I did. Now, if you perhaps have a looser stitch than I do, you may not have the problem that I did. I tend to crochet kind of tight and so it was really folding in my work only having the one. Now, again, in the blue, it won't make such a difference, but it really made a difference in that green row. So a single crochet all the way across. Again, this is a simple project. If you're already used to working in the round or working with corners like granny squares and you're kind of already used to the concept of the math and, and adding in the corners, we're doing the same thing, only we're adding six corners for the hexagon shape. Again, that's the last one for the row. Tuck that little tail there. And so here in the corner, again, it is right into the corner, one single crochet, chain one, and a second single crochet, and then going right into that first stitch around the corner. I'm gonna finish up this row real quick and I will be right back. So oh, black row is or blue row is completed there and into that first stitch. Pull through and complete. So that is our hexagon shape. Now what I like to do is since this was fished through, I can finish that off. I can finish this off. I like to get all of my hexagons in shape, um, including finishing off with these tails. If you decide to join with the same color, you can just kind of weave and stitch over them. However, that is not what I did for this uh, particular blanket for the demo. So I will show you how I go into the top of the following stitch here where it ended. You can see from here into the next one. I just push it through the stitch joins it together and then on the back side where the stitches make this little like V shape in the back at the bottom I just insert my needle and fish it through if your stitching is consistent it should just slide right through because you're going in between the two layers of yarn between the green and the blue row and I usually go around the corner because this is such a small project a few stitches each side pull through and we can cut that yarn right there and you can fluff it up and make your perfect shape so that is our beautiful hexagon now if you decide um you, you kind of decide at this point whether or not you want to add edges so when you have this shape of a blanket this is going to be the top and um you have the sides over here and you can choose to leave it a little wonky like that if you like to be creative. I personally don't mind it, especially just depending on the size of the blanket. But if you want to make the half hexagons, um, I will be showing you how to do that. So you can either fast forward through this portion or um, we're going to kind of continue on. Again, we are doing the... Um, Similar, we aren't working with the 12, we're only doing half, so we'll be working starting with six. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick little pause so you can decide if you're going to move forward or not. I'm going to bring some of my yarn back and be back in just a second. All right, so if you are still here, I'm going to assume that you want to do the edges to have the smooth sides. The tops are still going to be pointed on the style of blanket, excuse me but um, we can make the sides a little more smooth. This just makes it a little more consistent to um, do a round border at the very end. So again, we are doing half of a hexagon, so we need to do half of the beginning stitches. We started with 12. This round, we are going to start with six. I'm going to do the same magic ring. Two, 
three, four. I actually do five on the outside since we will be flattening it. I want to make sure that we have enough of a loop to be able to secure that straight side. Go around. And there's our center that we will be working into. Chain two. Two double crochet, three, four, five, and six. And that's it. That is your little semicircle. And you can see I added that one more. Again, that's kind of just the way that I have to do it for the way that I crochet. If you have a looser stitch or a looser chain, you may not have to do the five. You can probably do just fine with four, but this is the way I like to work. So there's your semicircle to start the pattern. You go ahead and trim this. And I actually leave this one hanging out. And we go on to the peak. Again, we will be doing half of the hexagon. So we need to do half of the amount of little bubble stitches. So we will need a total of six. Oh, sorry there. And we flip it this way. Insert into that top, our first stitch there. And we are going to chain two, one, two. Holding that tail, we're going to feed it along the fan and yarn over one, two, three, and four five rows there, pull through all five, pull it tight, and chain one. One, two, oops, two, three, and four, together, chain one. And things like that happen, you just go ahead and reinsert your hook through, pull again. Those are little easy mistakes to fix. Connect this one we no longer need. Done with that one. Because this is a half circle and you kind of get a wonky edge over here at this point after adding the pink in, then I take the yellow or from the first row. Again, if you're using all the same color, you don't have to worry about so many tails and you can just reverse your work. Um, I go down into the stitch to lock it into place, keep it tight. And then I go along these ones at the bottom a little bit. Three should do, pull that through. And now that fan shape is locked in. 
this last little tail, other little yellow one. I do a similar, um, because this one's a little short, I'm going to show you going this way. Now, if you can see how we have the two parts at the bottom here, I actually go over the top one and under the others to help lock it into place. And again, we're ending up at about the same place as with the other yellow yarn. You could weave it through here, but that makes it a little difficult when you do that last blue row. And when you have a short tail, you can put your needle through first, then yarn it and pull it through. So you don't have to waste so much yarn just in tails. Okay, so there's our start. Let's go on to the red row. And again, this is the one where we actually start to make the corners. And we want to start on a corner. Now, how do you start on a corner when the corner's a chain? We actually chain three. So what you want to do is find that little chain that you did at the end there. Or you can loop into the side, which is what I like to do loop into the side of the previous row. Take your red yarn. You're actually going to chain two. That would be the other side of the corner. So there's one, two, and then you have to chain one. That is your actual corner and add two stitches into the same spot. So there's your corner. This is going to be a flat side. So we do three double crochet here in between these bubbles. This is going to be our next corner. So one, Two. This is a proper corner, so we're going to chain one and do two more double crochet. This is the flat side on top. So one, two, and three double crochet. Another proper corner, so we have to do one, two, chain one for that corner, one, two, another flat side over here, so three double crochet, three, and then this is our turning chain from when we built up that pink row. This is where we're going to put that last corner where you'll do two double crochet, chain one, and one more double crochet to finish out this row. Those little pockets serve as the corner. So we gotta make sure that we even it out on both sides. Okay, moving on to the green row. Again, it's going to be very similar with the others. Again, we are starting in the corners. So you may want to, for simplicity, go ahead and feed these, pull them a little tight, give them a trim because we don't need them anymore. They fished through in my work. Go ahead and Go down the stitch just to tighten it up and then under the base there there's three when I have a more open weave like this I like to go a little further if it was just regular single crochet I don't do such a long tail but when it's more of an open weave like the granny square kind of like this I like to have a little extra 
make sure we have enough stitches holding it down. Okay, so turning our work again, so we work into the backs. Here's our corner and we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to do one single crochet, two chains, another single crochet into this gap that is the corner. So you're going to bring up your yarn, single crochet, one, two, single crochet, and then single crochet in all these stitches across. It's following the same pattern. It's just kind of different to try and only do half of a round shape or rounded shape. And so you kind of have to remember your math and how you work your corners. And luckily this one is um, simple enough to be able to find where those corners are in your shape. So when you come to the proper corner, that's single crochet, chain two, single crochet continue on. Another corner, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, carry on. And come to the end and again this is your corner so that space in between your rising chain and your first stitch of the red row you're going to chain one or I'm sorry single crochet two chains single crochet and that's it for that row lock in your work we are finished with this little tail here. If I can pull it tight, trim it. Go ahead and feed this in. Um, again, with this being the half, it's best to kind of feed these ends in as soon as you can so you don't lose your work. Down through the stitch under all of these on this side, pull it through, there you go. So final row for this one, I actually go all the way around. And the reason why I go even on this side is because this is going to be um, the side of the project. And once you are complete, as an example, when you are done and everything is all stitched together beautifully, then it is advised to do one more final row all the way around um, the blanket to kind of unify things. So again, to keep that same color, these would be stitched in the same color. The outside could either be a unique color or um, keeping with that same dark blue, that would be up to you. However you decide, you know, get, get fun with your colors. Um, not gonna tell you really what to do there. But I think um, for simplicity of when we get to that stage to already have that foundation row in that same color, it kind of helps to bulk it out a little bit so that it's easier to work with as well. Now, because we are going all the way around, I like to start an obscure place. So I'll just start right here in the middle. Given the opportunity, like I said, I try to make sure that my new colors don't always line up. So you're going to bring up your new yarn, single crochet all the way to the corner here. Once we get to that corner on this last final blue row, you do one single crochet, one chain, one single crochet in the gap can continue on single crochet. Now 
I'm coming to the corner here where we do have the extra chain, which is fine. That's what we wanted. We want to same thing, just like if you're rounding any other corner, you do one stitch, your chain, your next stitch. Now finding spaces along this line is a little more difficult. It's not going to be as even. Um, I basically just look for gaps in between my stitches. Like I know this isn't maybe the best place to put one because we want to keep that corner. But honestly, the whole reason why we have that corner there is for this very purpose so that we can go across and keep it even. You can go through the bottom half of your double crochet stitches, kind of force your needle in through there. Here's another easy hole to get into and kind of work down and along the way. Um, it's, it's just a matter of trying to keep your stitches even through, through this section. You want to try and make sure that you don't, um, I, I mean, it's up to you if you wish, you can go just straight across this hole here if you so wish, or you can try and go into the chains. Um, that's entirely up to you. Just trying to keep those stitches even across. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, because it's going to be pretty obvious that we're cutting a hexagon in half here. Right there. And again, coming to another corner. So we want to do one chain one. That chain rounds the corner for you. Do another stitch. And then your stitches all the way across. Your corner again it is one single crochet one chain another single crochet and around your corner at the end here you find your first stitch slip it together lock it in and you feed this end right into the top of the next stitch coming out the back there and down through the back of these stitches. And there you got it, your little half hexagons. So now we want to go ahead and figure out how to get all of these pieces together. Now, again, I try to suggest to make sure you've got all of your pieces made and then stitch them together. Some people like to actually do a slip stitch all the way across, um, and that will bring a texture here in between all of the pieces. If you like that because you already have the bubble texture, go ahead and give it a try. And I personally am not a fan of it. I like the texture just being here in the center of like the flower part because that's where I want the focus to be. So the best way I found to do this is to um, figure out the math, you know, how, how many need to cross and then you will do your wide row, your skinny row, wide row, skinny row, kind of like this. You're going to do four and then three and then four and then three and whatnot. And you're going to make strips. And then once you make the strips, then you're going to sew those strips together. So it's a tedious job, but somebody's got to do it. So you go ahead and you take your working color for demo again. I chose a different color to do this. And it's going to be a very simple whip together. You want to put the backs together, just like you're doing any kind of whip together stitch. So bubbles will be on the outside. 
you're going to find your corner chain. And you're going to find the corner chain in the other one. Bring your yarn almost all the way through. Leave a little small tail there and go through again. That locks that corner into place, okay? So when you're looking at the tops, you should see your little V shapes. And what you're going to do is take the inside parts of the V and stitch. So it'd be the back of this one, the back of this one, and stitch them together. You can bring this tail in and work it, um, work it through so we can hide it. And again, you're taking in between these two, in between this one, and bring it all the way across. You don't want to go too tight. You want to be able to make sure that your blanket and your work is still flexible. And you just simply carry on. And again, it's, it's a process, um, especially depending on how big of a blanket you make. Get all of your pieces together first in strips and then sew those strips together. Um, especially if you do different colors like this, you want to make sure that all of your stitches are kind of going in the same direction. I actually did not check that this time, so it'll be interesting <laughs> to see what I did. But, um, you know, it's a minor issue. At the end, again, you want to do that double loop. And essentially, this is stitched together. You want to go to the back side. Come under this chain that you just made. That helps to lock it in. And you can go down into, you see how they have little loops here in the back? Go behind one of those. Show you how to hide your yarn pretty well. And then you're going to go into the backs underneath the blue, between the blue and the green. That kind of helps to camouflage it. If you have very contrasting colors, you still might see a little bit. And that's why we do it on the back side. But for the most part, you can't even tell that it's there. Go ahead and remove that. You will do similar on this one that it's already under. So knowing that the other loop is on this side, if I turn my work this way, go under the stitch and under these stitches. Oops. Didn't get myself very long tail here. There we go. And pull under. Pull it a little tight, give it a trim, stretch it back out. Can't even tell. Now what you want to do, what's gonna be important to focus on when you get um, your extra pieces here, if you so wish to um, do your edge pieces. I personally would probably do all of those at the end. I would do this section first because what we need to do is stitch down this side, up and down, up and down. You could, in theory, just make it all the way across. I'm going to kind of pocket them in and show you how to do it that way. So, same thing. You want to make sure you lay them down together going to go corner to corner. For this, of course, you're going to need a longer piece of yarn to go all the way across your blanket. To measure that, I go the length of the blanket plus a little bit. Um, if it's a longer blanket, I try to double it. If you have extra yarn, then you can just use it on the next row. And again, you go corner to corner. And you want to lock that stitch in. And you go all along this side. Now you have to make sure when we get to the corner, we're going to be flipping our work. So it is going to get a little, little twisty turvy in a moment, but it will work out.
can give me just a second and I will show you how I do the corners. Okay, so here I am at the corner and I know for a fact that these are two corners here and this is the corner of this work. So what you want to do is make sure you go into the corner of this one, into the corner of the one that we're working with. And then we wanna go back into this corner and back into this corner. We're gonna make sure we go into this corner twice, connecting both pieces. So now we gotta lay this side flat as we go along, kind of turn our work to move along the way. And you just keep stitching from the inside and out on the other side. And those two top parts of the single crochet stitched together. And again, this way you can easily do a um, slip stitch all the way across, but that will add some texture that is up to you. I like mine to lay flat. So this is the way that I do it. Again, keeping that texture just to the part of the flower there, or um, if you do that whole inside part of the hexagram the same color, then that way as well. Oh, do one more here into the corner. And again, this is my corner stitch. So now I got to go into this corner as well. Put my next two sides together and give a little turn. And I will continue on my way here and then I will show you how to put in the next rows. Or, I'm sorry, the edge pieces. Okay, so here we are adding in the edge piece. I already did this side. Again, um, I kind of left it up to you whether you like to have the flat side over there or if you like to have the design. Um, that's, you know, a design choice up to you. But let me go ahead and show you how I get this piece in. It's very similar. Of course, it fits in just like a puzzle piece there. We want to go corner to corner first. And using that same light blue yarn, I'm going to find the corner of this one and the corner chain of this one and put them back to back. Leave a little bit of a tail to stitch in later. And it's just like when you go down the longer rows, you want to make sure you get both pieces of the corners um, stitched in together because that helps to, um, one, hold the piece flat and helps to kind of camouflage where the corners are and really holds it nice and secure. To go along our way here again going through the little v's i'm both making sure we just grab those two pieces that are together we don't want to go in this way and then that way because that will mess up the stitch and won't lay nice so you just kind of want to stitch the two very top pieces together there And when we get to the corner, you want to grab a little bit of this corner, adding on to the new piece, and a little bit of this corner, adding on to that new piece. And lock that in so we're turning the work this way across the inside. Now, I think for the edging on this one, because I've decided I'm just going to give this to my daughter for her dolls, um, I'm going to do it similar to the first one. And the first row on the outside is going to be the same dark blue. And then I will accent a second row around with the light blue. Um, if you're used to working in the round or working the square, putting edges on blankets, it's just like that. Again, when we come to corners, we will do um, a, a 
stitch, a chain, and a stitch. And in the valleys on top, you'll actually skip over two stitches, kind of like working in the chevron. That's how I figured out this pattern. I used techniques that I already knew and kind of played around with it until it made sense. So instead of doing the next couple of rows in different colors, I'm just going to keep them similar together. And again, coming into this final corner, we want to make sure that we're grabbing the center chain of both pieces. And we lock those in twice like that. Come to the back side of it, stitch through there, down into your work along the side to hide that tail. this tail on this side and we will go let's see how I did this one we will go under this stitch here down this one and along and underneath and again because it is a short tail I'm doing the needle first thread the yarn in and pull through pull it a little tight you can clip it close and straighten it back out and that will pull the rest of that yarn through. So that's a very basic construction of this blanket. And like I said, we're going to go around um, the edge in another dark blue and another light blue row to help even out um, the little bumps and things like that. And it will kind of help to make it cohesive where we had added the pieces together. So working on the back side, flip that over, pick up our hook. I'm going to start um, again when I'm working around something. I like to start in a really obscure place. So I'm going to start here on top so I can show for those that choose not to do the added sides here, how we kind of go around the corners and divvying up these smaller places instead of having to worry about the edges. So I'm going to do this side first and bring one up, chain one. We're just going to single crochet across. Till we get to the corner. And then again, because it is a corner, we're going to treat it like all the other corners. We're going to put a stitch here in the chain. We are going to chain one and we will add another one into that same spot and then into the first stitch and on the way down. And that's going to continue that little peak that we have on top. Coming here down to a valley is even more simple. And basically where you got those two corners together, just like if you were doing a chevron blanket, you're just gonna skip right on over those two stitches and come into this first stitch on this side. And that's going to help to create that little valley in between. It's gonna keep it nice and still for you. Work real quick here to the next peak, show you again 
working in corners, how we go, oh, next one. We go into that extra chain, chain one, another single crochet, and then back down. And we'll go into the next valley here real quick, and I will show you again. valleys are super simple because these two stitches that are held together we're just going to skip over it and go into the next stitch. I will show you how it still keeps that very simple chevron type shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue around the rest of this blanket um, Essentially, you just kind of keep trekking along when we come to the edges here. Um, you just go into the stitches that you created with that blue row. So I'm going to go all the way around. Again, with just single crochet, very simple. Doing single crochet, chain one, single crochet in all of the peaks. And skipping two chains in all of the valleys. And I will be right back with you. Okay, so I finished my one row around and you can kind of see how that uh, second row really kind of evens out with the same thickness um, to keep the consistency of the pattern. And it did help to even out the sides here where we are joining pieces together. So what I'm going to do, um, just because it's a little thing that I like to do is add a little accent color around the outside with this blue that I use to stitch everything together. I'm going to be continuing the same process that I did with the first row, doing at the, the peaks and the corners, doing a single crochet chain and single crochet in those chain pieces. And I will be skipping over two double, or I'm sorry, over two single crochets here in the valleys. And that helps to keep that chevron shape. So I start again in an obscure place. I'll start on the side here this time. And insert my hook, bring up one chain and start along the way, just single crochet along. And this will add a nice little accent color, like I said, on the edge. On the first example in the very beginning of this video, I chose to do white but since I'm just using scrap yarn here, um, I'm going to continue with this blue color that I've already used for stitching it together. I think it's a pretty fun little accent. You can see how it adds a little detail. So I'm gonna go ahead, go around and show you the finished project. All right, friends, and there you have it. Um, again, this is just a small demo. You can make this any size blanket, but that is my simple little hexagon design that I created there. I really love this little detail. Um, the light blue on the edge is a great accent, and I also like doing it this way so that the um, V on the top of the stitches is facing front, the same as little bobble stitches texture on the outside. So this is clearly the top of the blanket. And I just personally, I like the way that that looks better for a completed project. So that's simple, time consuming, yes, but pretty simple stitches to follow along. Um, especially when you're constructing something like this, it might be still be a little wonky once you complete it. But after a good wash cycle, I find that it relaxes and um, lays down a little easier. But I hope you enjoy this video. If, um, if time allows, I hope to do a few more in the next coming months. So please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff to help me out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, absolutely reach out to me and I will do my best to help you. Have a great one.